uh, this is a first. Um, it's a note on Jean de Forêt. And interestingly, in the background, if you concentrate and if the microphone catches the sound there, in another room, their office, so to say, where they have the, their um, home and uh, the cage and so on, uh, there is uh, Manon de Source on TV, which is the follow-up on uh, the second part of Jean de Floret, as adapted for television. So, in this sense, I have a first here. I had notes on plays, adapted versions of various works. Um, Gargantua and Pantagruel and so on. But this is the first time the idea came to me to, to have a note on a film. It's true this is not just a film, so it, it, it's, it's, the idea is, makes sense, is correct. I, I don't know about the execution, but as such it's more than uh, worthy deserves uh, so much praise from professional scholars and so on. Jean de Forêt, together with Manon de Source, are among the best films ever made. Uh, I'm sure of that. Um, and um, with this, it's justifiable again. Uh, we can comment, have notes on books, literature, plays, and this one is a film that uh, that does justice to the source. Even if I'm, I'm sure that even if I didn't read the original Marcel Pagnol, but still, it has a tremendous, magnificent cast. Yves Montand is sublime as the devious uh, chef de clan, souverain. Uh, they speak an amazing French uh, with the appropriate accent of the region. And here it's so well placed. I hate it when they make they make they, they make a British film or a French film or whatever, but they just have foreigners, somebody from Arabia or from Africa, speak with, in, in English with a, let's say, Scottish accent. Like this will, will do for somebody who's Arabic, uh, speaks Arabic, and never uttered the word of English. For me, it doesn't make sense. But then, uh, it's just a personal... Uh, Maybe the old syncrasy. Anyway, returning, there's Daniel Otoy as Ugolan. And there's his wife, I think she was his wife at the time. In the meantime, they, they are divorced. Uh, Emmanuel Bell, who plays in this uh, second part, which is on Cinemax uh, right now, uh, Man on the Source. And there's the Marvelous at the time, Gerard Depardieu. In the meantime, he's a Russian citizen, a friend of Putin, and that says about all there is to say about his um, descending to the abyss. The story is powerful. There are so many things here. Uh, there's sadness. There's the music now, the, the soundtrack, which is, again, so appropriate. Uh, there's greed, there's love, uh, there's uh, deception, there's uh, uh, murder, the murder of the star ah, uh, is um, maybe closer to a manslaughter. I mean, Yves Montand, his character, didn't want to, Souverain, didn't really want to kill the man. For, uh, for the land, uh, but uh, there was a clash, 
there was provocation on both sides and what happens after that is uh, terrible. Uh, there was no spoiler alert at the start, so I'm, I'm not going to go into details as to compromise for uh, a potential person who sees this, any viewing, any look at the film. Uh, but um, even if the Suvaran didn't kill uh, the owner of this uh, source uh, of water, the spring, um, what he does after that is um, impossible to justify in any way, it's a despicable, heinous. It, karma, I don't really believe in reincarnation, uh, karma as seen by the Buddhists, or, or, although I, I, I approve so many of their concepts, the com co concept of compassion is wonderful, even if I, I, I don't feel it, but as an idea, it sounds great. Um, so um, it, it comes back to him. What goes around comes around. I will not say in what manner, but uh, we pay a price for what we do. Uh, I'm thinking now of the sermon of the priest in the village who says the justice of humans is fallible. Is unable to punish a lot of the criminals and wrongdoers. 